Here I have on my desktop a um, movie clip called Map, and on top of that I have an X called Mark. What I'd like to do is I want the user to be able to click on this, and when the user clicks on it, it goes from being small to large. So I need to highlight both of these objects, modify, convert to symbol, and I'm going to call this shrink, and I'm going to call this movie clip, movie clip main map. Great. Inside of main map, so this is our scene one, I'm going to double click on this map, and inside we see these breadcrumbs and the inner map. What I'd like to do is I want it to be small when the map's on the page until the user clicks on it. So I just made it smaller and now I'm going to go out in my timeline and I'm going to do insert timeline frame because that's how long I'd like for the animation to take. Uh, I'm going to position it in a place more reasonable. Now I want to animate it. I want both the map and the X to become larger. Uh, I'm going to use uh, insert motion tween. The issue is I need to put each of these on a separate layer. So I'm going to copy and cut the X from the map and I'm going to place it on its own layer by hitting paste in place. Okay, great. Now they're both a small size here. I want to make them larger. So I'm going to highlight both of the layers and I'm going to do insert motion tween. Now I'm going to drag my playback controller to the end of the clip and I'm going to make these larger. I'm going to hold down the option key and the shift key. Great. I'll do control test so I can test my movie just to see. Obviously though I don't want it to loop like that back and forth. What I need to do is add another layer called actions and in the first layer I'm going to go window actions stop and the actions palettes off screen so I just typed in stop Oops, semicolon. So now when I test my movie, so I'll need to add some action script on my main timeline to control the animation. So I'll go back to scene one and I'll go to my top layer, add a new layer called actions. Oopsie. Called actions. Now this will be the action script that the end user uh, will click on this map and then trigger that movie clip to play. Main map, main map, add event listener, and that event listener is going to be a mouse event, which is going to be click, and that's going to trigger a function called play map. The function play map is a mouse event and we're going to put void here and we're going to put curly brace and we're going to say main map go go to and play I'm sorry, it should be a lowercase two, go to and play frame two. All right, let's see if that works by testing that movie. I'm doing command return. Excellent. Hey, look what happens though. It makes that map larger and then it automatically pops smaller. So what we need to do is we need to go inside the main map and add a keyframe at the end, and that keyframe also needs a stop action. So that when I test it, it looks like this. Kablow. Okay, 
uh, now what I'd like is I would like it so that when the end user, so I need to go back to my main scene, when the end user clicks on the X inside of the map, the X triggers something else to happen. I just want to bring this up that this is just a sample. The problem is when we double click on side of main map, we see that Mark is in here, but we can't talk to Mark from our main timeline. We need actually to talk to Mark in this way. Say, hey, main map, inside of you is a movie clip called Mark, and I want to add an event listener to that. Uh, make that a mouse event. Uh, make that a click. And then I'm going to say play Mark. And the function for this, for play Mark, is going to be an event or triggered by a mouse event. And then we're going to type in the proper code. Open curly brace, close curly brace. I don't have anything happening right now, so what I would like to do is use something called trace. Trace is a way for people who are doing programming to test if their code works. Um, I don't have any other events to trigger just yet, so it would make sense just to, I want to test it. In this case, I'm going to say trace, open quotation marks, the movie clip mark has been triggered. And then I'll close that up. So this line just lets me know when my, that my code is working. So now I'll go to Control Test Movie and Animate. Here it comes. OK. I'll click on it. Uh, that first let the main map grow larger. But if I click on it again, the movie mark has been triggered. So there's our output once the mark's been triggered. Realistically, it makes more sense to combine clicking on the main map and adding the mark. The user usually isn't going to just click on the map. They'll click on one of the objects within the map. So in this case, I combined main map mark when someone tricks on the, clicks on the mark, then the function plays go ahead and trigger the main map animation, and then do the trace. I have trace again as an output, so here nothing happens when I just click on the map, but when I click on the mark, I get the output, the movie mark is triggered, and the map grows larger. Um, I, again, I just have this output to test it. I'm going to show you in the next video, uh, I'll cause something to happen when it is being clicked on. For this next part, what I'd like to do is I would like to, I see that I've put my action in the wrong layer, excuse me, they belong in the actions layer. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to have something get triggered when someone clicks on the X in the middle of the map. And this trigger is going to be uh, a circled area where you can find treasure. That is a very meager circle. And I'm going to change it anyway, but I just couldn't even look at that. So I'll just go kablow. What I need to do here is I need to highlight circle. I need to do modify convert to symbol. And I'll call it highlight circle. Although in the instance name, I'm just going to call it circle. Inside of the circle movie clip, I'm going to call this inside circle. The first thing I'm going to do is add an action script layer called actions. And in the first keyframe, I will put a stop. Stop. Great. Now, this first keyframe needs to be in the second keyframe. There should be nothing here until someone triggers the X and then that causes the circle to play. So I'm going to go out into my timeline and go insert timeline frame and I'm actually going to have my end result be that circle and in frame 2 I'm going to do keyframe 
And I'm going to do a frame by frame animation using onion skinning. So I'll turn on onion skinning and I'll pull out the playback so I can see the whole width. And I can see the faint outline of the onion skin here. So that can help me draw a little bit at a time. Each time I'm going to insert a keyframe and then I'm going to draw more of my circle and insert a keyframe and draw more of a circle. And I'm going to turn onion skinning off and I'm just going to hit play. Great. Great. That's exactly what I want. Now uh, I'm going to also put another keyframe in the end of my action layer so that I can have this stop as well. Oopsie. Great. If I go to my main timeline, we don't see anything. Because inside of this movie clip, and this little circle here indicates a movie clip, but the first keyframe is empty. And it is. We want the first keyframe to be empty so that it can draw or animate only when someone clicks on the X. So this movie clip, again, has a property name of circle. I'm going to go to my action screen up here. And instead of saying trace when the main map gets played, I'll say circle, go to and play frame two. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I do command return. Uh, nothing happens when I click on the map part, but if I actually hit the X, it causes the circle to turn on to play. Okay.